Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a full face of makeup that I was obsessed with that I've kind of like forgotten about. Um, obviously, as part of what I do here, um, I've got a massive makeup collection, like it's a little out of control. And there are products that used to be my absolute favorites that I just don't seem to reach for anymore purely because I've got so many choices. <laughs> I have seen a couple of other people do these videos and I really, really enjoyed watching them and just like rediscovering like old faves, um, you know, that would like my ride or dies. And I just feel like it's gonna be really interesting to actually try them again and see if my opinions on them have changed because as you grow um you know even as you age or as you discover new things as products change as the industry changes everything changes as far as opinions go as well so i'm interested to see if the products that i used to be obsessed with to see whether or not i am still obsessed with them so yes that's pretty much the gist of today's video so if you're interested in hanging out with me and playing with some makeup that i used to be obsessed with then please keep on watching all right so first up i've got the benefit pore professional primer um <sighs> This is a really, really good pore blurring, pore minimizing primer, but I just don't seem to reach for it because I find that pore minimizing primers on me personally, because I'm such an oily skin type, um, I do find that they just, my makeup doesn't last as long when I use them. Definitely does an amazing job of blurring pores though, but yeah, I just don't really find myself reaching for it. Um, it gives like these sort of really heavily sort of silicon based primers, um, they give the skin like a really slippery feel. Um, and basically it just it just smooths the whole canvas out for makeup to go on top of. I tell you what though, this one is really good for days when you don't want to wear any makeup at all because it just makes the skin look so much nicer. Like, so smooth and it does feel really, really smooth as well. All right, now for foundation, the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I used to be absolutely obsessed with this foundation. I used to wear it all the time on my channel. Um, I really want to do like a natural kind of glowy-ish, no falsy sort of a makeup look today. So um, I was like, I'm going to try this bad boy out again i've got the shade 6.5 so hopefully it matches i don't have any others i know that there are a lot of people that are still really obsessed with this one um i just don't seem to reach for it anymore and i'm picking it up on the nikia joe cosmetics perfecting sponge well this is the pro perfecting sponge and i'm gonna blend it in these are back in stock now guys um hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages emails comments all over social media from you guys asking when these are going to be back in stock they're back in stock now yay you want to know a little bit more about them um they're obviously like a blending sponge you can use them with liquid cream powder products um, but they're a little bit different to what's on the market because the pores of the sponge are so small so they absorb a lot of water but then they don't absorb a lot of product and also because the pores are so small it'll give you the smoothest finish for your makeup like literally ever oh i do remember why i loved this one it's sort of like quite lightweight on the skin Looks really glowy. All right, so this is what that one looks like on the skin. It's very glowy. I would say it's more of like a medium coverage. It's certainly not a full coverage foundation. Very glowy. It feels very, very lightweight. And it also has kind of ish dried down. Um, I can tell why I used to be obsessed with this. I really can. So brows. The Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Dark Brown. I was so obsessed with this. Um, I just find myself now reaching more for brow powders as opposed to pomades. Um, I don't know, they I just they, they're quick and easy and they just never seem to stuff it up kind of a thing. Oh, she's well loved, isn't she? I wonder if it's even Yeah, it's still moist. Oh hate that word. Why did I just use that word? So I'm taking that one on a flat brush. Really nice and cool tone. That was another thing. And I mean the thing is like it depends on what you're sort of wanting from your brow product. Like obviously these ones are much longer lasting. Um, they're sweat proof. A lot of them are waterproof. Um, you know, great for oily skin types. But I just seem to reach for powders more often. Um, to be honest, so this is really easy to use. Like it's not like it would really take me longer than using a powder. So I'm not entirely sure. Whoa. Got a little bit happy then, didn't I? Um, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not entirely sure why I stopped using it. All right, then to set the brows, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel was always, always, always obsessed with this. Um, now I pretty much never use clear brow gels. I prefer the tinted ones that make my brows look fluffier and fuller and sort of more natural. I just kind of find now that clear brow gels, I don't know, they make my brows look a bit shiny. Definitely holds the hairs in place. I just, I don't look as natural, I don't feel. Now to prime the eyes, I'm going to use the MAC Pro Longwear uh, Concealer in the shade NC20. This was like my go-to ride or die um, eyeshadow primer. Um, you guys know now that I always use the Pro Longwear Paint Pot in Soft Ochre, but this was like legit everything. Just picking it up on the sponge again. And I'm going to blend it over my lid. 
lids and sort of under my eyes. It's a really quick and easy and like super simple way to apply your eye primer like this. Much easier than using a brush and you'll find too um, these sponges will put down a perfect amount. It's got amazing coverage as concealer. It is a brilliant concealer. Um, but it's another one of those products that I don't know. I just don't seem to reach for all the time like how I used to. At the same time though, if you ask me like, you know, top maybe seven concealers in my collection, this one would be in it. All right, for eyeshadow, I'm going to go in with the Lorac Unzipped Palette. I used to flog this like all the time. And now for some reason, I never, I don't know, I never use it. It's a beautiful palette. It's very Nakia, like these are pretty much the colors that I always wear. Um, I want to do something really soft, really natural today. So I might stick to sort of like these really light pearlescent tones. Um, but I, I just loved this. It blends beautifully. It wears beautifully. It's a really beautiful palette. Absolutely. Like I still swear by it. I just, I've got so many options and this one just never seems to get grabbed. So I'm going to go in first with Unconditional, this sort of soft pinky shade. And very, 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 very lightly, I'm going to work this through the crease. I'm not going to do mascara today. I'm going to be using a new mascara that I've been testing probably for about a week now. Um, and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It's funny too. Eyeshadows have changed so much over the years as well. Like formulas like I just feel like products are just getting better and better and better and better um you know things aren't the same as they used to be like five years ago like they're just not I feel like eyeshadow palettes these days are way more pigmented I feel like they're easier to blend like I just feel as an overall things are better I'm gonna go in with unreal now and maybe a little bit of this one here unattainable they're just beautiful wearable shimmery colors like if you're after a palette that you don't have to think twice about it's very very easy to use to create looks with it's a good one so just packing that on with my finger i just want it to be sort of soft and light and nothing too ott like we're going for glowy natural sort of makeup today oh that's a really nice color and i'm just smudging a little of unconditional under my eyes as well all right, so moving on to mascara now, and I'm going to be using the brand new mascara. This one's only just launched from Kat Von D. This is the Go Big or Go Home mascara. Like I said, um, I've been testing this. I mean, I was lucky enough to actually receive it prior to the launch. Um, I've been working with them a little bit on Instagram and stuff, which is so exciting. Um, but yeah, this, I am like, I'm genuinely blown away at how good this mascara is. Um, you guys know I always really, really struggle with mascaras that smudge and flake and transfer, me being an oily skin type. Um, a lot of mascaras, they just end up everywhere on me. This one is absolutely 100% smudge proof and it actually makes my lashes look really, really long. Gives me heaps of volume. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, really impressed. So it's obviously a vegan formula being that it's by Kat Von D. Um, it's got a bunch of oils in it, sunflower oils and things like that. But even though it's got those oils in it, it, it truly doesn't transfer. I'm sure you're a little freak out when you see how massive this makes my lashes look. Really nice packaging too, really luxe. So I'm gonna apply it on this eye. Um, the way that I apply my mascara is I place the brush at the bottom. Look at that already. Can you get, can you see that already? That's insane. I've hardly put any on. Um, but the way that I apply my mascara is I put the brush at the base of the lashes and then I wriggle it and then sort of sweep it out. It's more of a dry formula too, which I absolutely love in mascaras because it means that you don't make any mess. Like, you know, when you're applying it, it's a lot harder to get it to transfer and sort of, you know, end up with it all over your lids. Like, look at that. Can you guys like, my lashes never look that good. I'm, I'm just, it's really, really good. I unfortunately am not gifted with like super long, super curled eyelashes. Mine are quite short and they're quite flat and straight. And I mean, you guys know the story. You've been watching these for ages, but um, yeah, I really love the way this mascara makes my lashes look like. It looks like I'm wearing falsies, literally. You can just keep layering it too without it clumping. It's awesome, but I mean, this is all good. But for me, smudge proof, like hallelujah. It's kind of like their eyeliner, the um, tattoo eyeliner. It's been one of my holy grail eyeliners for, I mean, pretty well ever since I tried it, which was probably when it was first released. Um, It's still my ride or die. I still recommend it to everybody if they're looking for like a really good, super black, long lasting eyeliner that's not going to transfer or smudge. I always recommend that one. But yes, I'm going to finish this eye. I might even use a little bit of eyeliner in between my lashes just at the base to make things like kind of a slight little bit darker. Or I may not, but I'm going to do this eye and then I'll be right back. All right, so moving back onto the skin, I'm, I'm going to go back in with that MAC concealer. Um, I'm pretty... Maybe I'll do a little bit of spot coverage, but I'm pretty much just going to use it underneath my eyes and sort of down the center of my face, how I usually do. Um, this, like, 
when I loved it back in the day, it was brilliant. It's still brilliant now. It's a very, very liquidy, very, very lightweight, but it packs like so much coverage. It's awesome. Like you'll see as I apply it here, you kind of wonder, you know, as you're applying it, like where the hell did all that coverage even come from? Might even need a slightly darker shade though. This was the shade that I always used to use. So blending it. It blends beautifully and it definitely lasts like all day long. Like it's a really, really long lasting concealer. Very smooth. It was my number one concealer that I used to use in my bridal kit. Um, you know, or for shoots or whatever it was when I was working as a professional makeup artist. Like, it was very well loved. And I'm just taking a tiny little bit more of the uh, Luminous Silk Foundation as well. Do, like, now that my brows and stuff are done, I do want a little bit more coverage, I think. Now, this is going to be interesting. I do not use pressed powders, especially tinted pressed powders to set my... Whoa, okay, it's a little bit smashed. Um, to set my foundation anymore. It is just... I, I feel like it just makes my skin look textured. I feel like it just doesn't look good at all. Um, This is the NARS Pressed Powder in Beach. I used to use this all the time, like, literally all the time. Um, so this is going to be very interesting. So I'm going to take this one with a big fluffy powder brush and pick it up and then use it to set the face. Oh my God. All right. So it's definitely adding color um, to my foundation. It's darkening it up. And now I've got a weird line sort of where that lighter concealer is. The things that we used to do. I'm just personally not a fan of using like powder foundations or anything to set down my foundation. I like everything to look absolutely perfect and smooth and just beautiful, which is of course why I made this. I mean, hello, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, this is my setting powder that I just launched. I will link it down below. It's the Velvet Setting Powder and it is literally life-changing. I feel like this is adding texture. It's not you know, normally when you powder your face, it removes texture. I feel like this is adding texture. So you're probably safe to say this one is not a product I'm going to be reaching for anytime soon. <laughs> Next up, I've got another NARS product. This is the NARS Laguna Bronzer. Look how well loved this is. She's very, very well loved. This for a very, very long time was everybody's favorite bronzer on YouTube. Um, mm, don't seem to use it anymore. Ooh, it's very dark. It's kind of darker than I seem to remember. Um, I switched to the Casino bronzer after a little while. The Casino one has more of like a warm undertone. And I just preferred how it looked. But this one, oh, you know, this is beautiful. Yeah, okay. I understand why I was so obsessed with this one now. It's gorgeous. I'm just using that one to very sort of softly contour. Although... She's looking a little hardcore on this side. <laughs> for blush, I've got this one by Hourglass. I was obsessed with these. They're a really beautiful product, but for whatever reason, I don't know, I just don't seem to use them anymore. Um, the Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Luminous Flush. This one's sort of like a pinky, kind of coralish kind of a color. So taking a fluffy brush, I'm going to pick that one up um, and apply it. Oh... I do remember why I used to love this so much. It is really pretty. It's very soft. It's very easy to apply. I don't feel like it's adding too much texture. I can see the obsession with this one. I understand. I think I need to use this a lot more. Okay, for highlighter, I feel like no one's going to be surprised about this one. The Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Opal. This was like the only highlighter I was wearing for like years like actual years just loved it like i really just loved it so picking that up with a small highlighting brush oh that's actually for some reason in my mind i had decided that this wasn't that pigmented but she is she genuinely is holy hell wow let's do the cupid's bow let's do the tip of the nose let's do here Let's do here, let's do here, let's do here. Like, I do want to be like a glowing queen today. <laughs> do genuinely miss this highlighter. It's beautiful. Wow. It's so much more pigmented than I remember. Perhaps I apply it differently to how I used to apply it. That's also a possibility. And then finally for lips, and this one was kind of a hard one because there were so many options that I could have chose. Um, I went through like a lot of my old videos though, and I always seem to be using this particular liquid lipstick, like back to back in like every single video. So I was like, it has to be this one. So the Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipstick and the shade is pure Hollywood. Looking at this now, 
It's potentially going to be way too pale, but we're going to find out. Oh, it's actually not too bad. It's a very different shade to what I wear now, though. Like, now I seem to go from, like, deeper, sort of richer shades on my lips. This is, like, I mean, the more that I apply it, it is really pale. So this is what that one looks like. Yeah, really probably not a color I would typically reach for too much these days. Um, I'm really surprised at how much I've changed. It's like really interesting to me. I do feel the urge to put some gloss on because I have got quite dry lips at the minute. Um, and I feel like you can see that. <laughs> not cute. Well, there you go, guys. This is the finished makeup look. I would love to know your thoughts on how everything turned out um, in the comment section down below. Um, really interesting to revisit a lot of these products that I don't really reach for anymore. Um, that NARS powder, absolutely I will not be using that. Um, I'm probably just going to turf that one to be honest. Um, a lot of the other products I can see exactly why I was so obsessed with them. I do really love how glowy the skin is. Um, that Giorgio Armani foundation really is beautiful. It's very lightweight, like it's not heavy either. Um, quite impressed with that. I, I feel like the matte concealer is way too light, um, but it's obviously, it was always NC20 that I used, always NC20. Um, but yeah, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. So I hope you guys really enjoyed it too. If you did enjoy it, please give the video a thumbs up and I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.